Kristen Arnold is an expert on teams in the workplace. She has a passion for helping teams to be extraordinary, taking them beyond the ordinary. Please welcome Kristen Arnold. Today is about how to help you build a team because I strongly come to the table with a philosophy that says a team is greater than the sum of its parts. And I can get a lot done if I band together with people who have a common interest with me, with a common goal, and we want to go over there. Let's all go over there and go over there together. When we come to the workplace, there are certain things that should be team-based. Um, things that are cross-functional, things that are complex, things that require a high level of commitment and dedication. Yeah, those are team things, but some things are just better left to the individual for one person to do. So here's your first tip for the day. Decide what should be team play and what is better left delegated to a person. One of the ways that I can tell a high-performing team is if I walk in and I can't tell who the leader is because the team is managing its own dynamic. So here's a simple way that you can get people more on your team, and that's to use some inclusive language. There are basically three ways that you can be more successful in your business without working harder. The first is to enhance your unique expertise. The second is to leverage your existing business model. And the third, marry somebody who makes a lot more money than you do. Once you can voice that crystal clear picture of success to yourself, as well as to others, it takes on a life of its own. One thing I see in America today is this thing called teen mania. We can't make a decision unless we've got the entire library with us. Well, heck, just let them know what's going on, invite the right people, get the right balance of participation and involvement, but somebody's got to make a decision. <laughs> Communication is about a two-way street. And here's the challenge for you. If you find yourself doing one of the five deadly sins, call each other on it. Talk at people. Talk about others. Talking around people whining to just avoid the whole thing altogether. Business is all about relationships. It's about people connecting. And effective teams have that balance, all three ways of relationships, about process, and, and getting great results. Yeah, you're the leaders in the organization, but if you're working in a team-based environment, everybody should be able to call the foul, to say, you know, you're stepping a little bit out of bounds. Do we really have a consensus? By the way, the definition of a consensus is we can live with it and support it upon implementation. That's two separate items. That means you agree and you are, will not badmouth it out in the parking lot after all is said and done. You agree with it and you support it upon implementation. So you can simply go around and say, do you agree with it and will you support it? Do you agree with it and will you support it? You know what that does is it increases the commitment to the decision. It is through these informal team building activities that we get to know each other's strengths, personalities, differences. Um, a lot of teams, and especially you as lead team leaders, you go, I don't have time to do a team building activity. I'm suggesting you don't have time to not do a team building activity. Let people get to know each other, not just on the on the professional what can you do for me basis, but what makes you tick? Some people call this touchy-feely. I don't think team building activities have to be touchy-feely. Make it relevant to the workplace and people will open up in ways that you would never explore, you'd never see before. But we trust each other based on a relationship level. Teams succeed because they have a goal they have the right people on the team, they were set up for success, and they have the skills and the resources to accomplish the job. As a high stakes meeting facilitator, trainer, and keynote speaker, Kristen Arnold has worked with thousands of senior executives, project managers, and team leaders, challenging their traditional notions about teamwork. In an engaging and interactive way, she presents concrete, practical concepts 
tools and techniques her clients can immediately apply and realize substantive results. Kristen is an accomplished author and featured columnist in the Daily Press, a Tribune publishing newspaper. She was the owner of the Arnold Building, an executive suite and multimedia office facility, and is regarded as an expert in team development, facilitation, and problem-solving techniques. She was a member of the third class of women to ever attend the United States Coast Guard Academy and graduated with high honors. She then was stationed on board the USC GC Buttonwood in Galveston, Texas, as the only woman on board with 52 men. Kristen went on to earn a Master of Business Administration degree from St. Mary's College of California, and Kristen is currently on the Executive Development Faculty in the Schulich School of Business at York University in Toronto. She has been honored with numerous awards, has many professional affiliations, and has achieved three of the highest designations available within each of her core competencies. Plus, she served as a member and elected officer of a variety of boards, partnerships, and associations. I think it's clear to say that Kristen Arnold knows a little bit about working in teams. Teams, if you want to look at how healthy are your teams, there's three components. It's like a tripod, three-legged stool. One of these legs are out of whack, your team is out of whack. One, Wanda, you brought it up, relationships, that I trust you and that I'm willing to work with you. Number two, are we getting movement towards the results that we're dedicated to? Do we even know what results we're dedicated to? Um, so that's the second one. The third one is are you using a smooth process? Process, I'm a facilitator. Do you have somebody who's process oriented? Or are you just like, you know, spending your time fighting or your process is, is lumpy? You know, process, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Are you moving in a straight line or not? Look at those three components. Are you in sync on all three? When you get out of whack, that's where you can help. You know, my hope is that you got some good ideas that would help you engage your spectators, make them into team players, team players and spectators. It's a pretty natural phenomenon, pretty natural. Hopefully you've learned some strategies to help you engage and empower excite and get people enthused about your teamwork. What are some of the ideas, the strategies that you take away and I can help you play a little? What's some, uh, some of the ideas that you, you picked up? Assume positive intent. Thank you so much for playing. Yes. Can you commit forever hold your peace? Thank you. What else? Head off the stuff. Try not to let that cod get too smelly. Thank you. Yes, sir. Be inclusive. Use that inclusive language. Excellent. Thank you. What else? Yes, ma'am. The five L's. The five L straw poll. What a cool technique. Thank you so much. Whoop. I was not a baseball player. Yes, ma'am. The three knock rule. A very easy way of just reminding people. One last one. Yes, ma'am. Avoid the dashboard dog. Avoid the dashboard dog. Thank you so much. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much.